The 2023 stock market has started off to the races. The S&P 500 index is up 8.28% year to date, and the NASDAQ 100 is up a whopping 15.77%. That is crazy growth to start the year. The bull market seems to be back from the dead after a miserable 2022. This leaves investors asking the question, is the bull market here to stay, or will the bear market return with vengeance? In today's video, I'm going to give my thoughts on the recent growth, the future of the market, and share my overall progress on my long-term dividend growth stock portfolio. Let's roll the intro. My name is Zach and you should leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the video. Every month I analyze the progress of my portfolio. These videos help me reflect on my investing strategy and hopefully provide value for others as well. If you want to track your investments just like me, then sign up and become a member of my website DividendData.com. This platform is a research tool that I personally developed for dividend investors. You can manually upload your account or automatically import it from supported US brokerages. You'll gain access to a myriad of features, including my in-depth stock research tool. The website will keep improving over time. For example, I just put out an update to improve the accuracy of the dividend frequency and projected income data. This should be now near 100% accurate for US stocks. If you want to support the channel to ensure I make more videos and create better software tools, becoming a member at DividendData.com is the best way. It's $10 a month or discounted over 15% at $100 annually. There's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so no risk in trying it out. Your support really is appreciated, and it makes all this possible. Now let's dive into my portfolio. My current value sits at $115,180. With $93,523 initial dollars invested to fund my account, this puts my total return at 23.16%. Nearly all my stocks are up over the past month. Microsoft is my top position, currently valued at $25,730, or around 22% of my portfolio. I'm up 6.66% so far. This is a stock I have been adding to significantly in the second half of 2020. I'm planning on it being one of my core long-term holdings. In my opinion, Microsoft is poised to be a dividend growth machine over the next decade. ExxonMobil is my number two stock, valued at $17,543. My total return is a massive 210.73%. With my two years of reinvesting dividends, I've earned 18.74 more shares. This has boosted my dividend yield on initial cost basis to 10.11%. ExxonMobil is absolutely raking in profits right now. That said, I'm not planning to buy more of the stock unless the company is at a massive discount. That will likely not happen until we're in a down market again for oil. My third largest stock is the Altria Group, ticker symbol MO. The current value is $13,974 with a total return of 15.13%. This is my largest dividend payer with an estimated annual income of $1,120. With reinvested dividends, my yield on cost is 9.23%. Altria is a high yield dividend compounding machine with reliable growth. My fourth largest stock is Disney, currently valued at $12,188. I'm down 25% overall and the dividend payment remains suspended. That will likely be true for the next few years as they pay down debt and work to get their streaming services profitable. I talked about Disney more in detail in my last portfolio update video. Most of my thoughts there still apply. Stock number five is T. Rowe Price, ticker symbol T row. This is valued at $8,444, which is a 13.28% total return. Similar to Microsoft, I've been building this position in the second half of 2022. I will continue to buy more if the stock price falls back down. Frankly, I think it may still be a good deal at current prices. Stock number six is Apple. This is valued at $7,798, which is a 25.96% total return. Apple remains one of the highest quality businesses in the world, and I will continue 
continue to dollar cost average on dips. Next is Intel, which I just made a video about. Check that out for detailed thoughts on their latest earnings. My other stocks include Texas Instruments, Kroger, Visa, Chevron, PepsiCo, and Enterprise Product Partners. This portfolio has a dividend yield on cost of 3.37%, and from reinvesting dividends, I've boosted my yield on initial cost to 3.6%. That is a snowball effect of 0.22%. My five largest dividend payers are Altria, ExxonMobil, Intel, T. Rowe Price, and Microsoft. Here's the current diversification of my portfolio. Technology is my largest segment at around 40%, followed by energy, consumer defensive, financial services, and communication services. My account has transitioned massively over the past two years as I continued learning more about investing and refining my strategy. Since my last portfolio update, I have only bought one stock. This was a share of Microsoft at $232.76. Additionally, I reinvested dividends in both PepsiCo and Altria. The reason I didn't buy more is because everything rose in price significantly during January. The bull market seems to be back, which we'll discuss later in the video. My projected annual dividend income is $3,362.40. This is $840 every quarter, $280 every month, $9.21 every day, and $0.38 cents every hour. Here you can see the projected schedule of my dividend payments over the next year. This February will be my lowest month at around $100. March will be my highest month and is absolutely loaded with dividends. Notice that the diversification of my portfolio's value is vastly different from the diversification of my projected dividend income. This has to do with the deferring dividend yields of each stock. My upcoming dividends include $58.28 from EPD, $33.70 from Texas Instruments, and $11.61 from Apple. In total, my portfolio has generated $7,777 in dividend income. I've reinvested all of this to buy more stock, increasing my future income. This is the dividend snowball effect at work. In January, I received $264.13. This was from PepsiCo, Altria, O, and FRT. O and FRT are stocks I have since sold. I discussed this in recent update videos. With Altria, I earned $186.95, which I reinvested to buy over four new shares. My next payment will be even larger at around $280. Since my last update, only one of my stocks has announced a dividend raise. Chevron increased its dividend 6.3%. That is not yet reflected in my portfolio data, but is in my breaking real-time dividend news. So that is an update on the current state of my portfolio. But now let's get to the topic of the day, the 2023 stock market. With a strong start to the year, investors are wondering whether we will see a new bull market or quickly fall back into the 2022 bear market. First, let's understand why the market soared in January. There are many compounding factors in place here causing bullish sentiment. Top of mind, we now have had a six-month consecutive decline in year-over-year -year inflation. In fact, we've even had consecutive months of outright month-over-month -month declines in inflation. This seems like inflation may be finally getting under control. In response, Fed Chair Jerome Powell mentioned disinflation 15 times during his recent Fed Q&A. On top of this, he announced a slowing of the rate of interest rate increases from the prior 50 basis point hikes to 25 basis points. Also, Powell mentioned that they are only planning two more 25 basis point hikes in the following two meetings. From there, it seems like they will pause as long as inflation continues trending down. This is massive news and investors finally feel like they have some certainty on this crucial factor in the valuation process. As we've discussed in prior videos, a rise in the risk-free rate of return makes riskier assets like stocks less attractive by the principle of opportunity cost. This increases the discount rate, compressing the valuation of stocks. In addition to this news, the market was starting from an extremely beaten down place. Sentiment was low and many stocks were down massively. 
This led to large amounts of tax loss harvesting at the end of the year, so many investors did have some capital ready to redeploy. In January, we also got through a large portion of earnings season. The results were mostly strong, with no widespread disaster signaling an earnings recession. Of course, there were individual companies and sectors doing worse than others. Overall, there seems to be trends of companies buckling down, cutting costs, and focusing on profitability. I like that that's at the top of management's mind at times like these. I would say earnings have been mostly in line with expectations thus far. The interesting thing is that it seems like stocks who were punished most in 2022 have seen the highest growth in 2023. For example, Tesla is up 75% to start the year. Meta is up 49%. Warner Bros. Discovery is up 61%. And countless stocks are up 10 to 30%. But is the bull market here to stay? There are certainly many investors who think not. As recent as last week, big short investor Michael Burry put out a tweet with a one-word warning, sell. He even deleted his Twitter profile afterward. Keep in mind, this is all very much in line with Burry's behavior, so take away what you will. Negative catalysts include the possibility of a 2023 earnings recession. There is certainly evidence in some individual companies and sectors, but it's not widespread as of now. Another risk is the inflation data rising again, causing the Federal Reserve to be more hawkish on interest rates. This could dramatically cause the markets to tumble back down from their recent gains. Some economists argue in inflation could rise due to the strong job performance. We just had a massive beat in the latest jobs report with the lowest unemployment rate in a year. A few high-profile macroeconomists have argued that we will not see lower inflation until unemployment rises and consumer demand declines. All it takes is a sentiment shift among investors for stocks to go back into the bear market. My current approach to the 2023 market is cautious optimism. I'm hesitant to buy more right now given the recent surge in prices. Prices were much lower on many stocks less than one month ago. They could easily return to those levels quickly. That said, over the long term, I'm not going to play the game of predicting macroeconomic conditions. I'm going to have my primary focus on the individual companies I'm buying. When a business I understand with good fundamentals is trading at a fair price, I'll be buying. However, all of this is just my opinion and be sure to do your own research before making any investing decisions. Thank you for watching Dividend Data. You can sign up for DividendData.com to track your portfolio just like me and join a Discord community of like-minded investors. Follow me on Twitter for real-time dividend news and thank you for watching.